Continuing on in Unit 1, we're going to talk about how to convert between units. And usually this is a very challenging part of any chemistry course for my students. Uh, my advice for you is to take your time. It's also to take deep breaths. Uh, I find that a lot of students have anxiety about math and that really prevents them from being in the moment and with the conversion problem. They can get all anxious and think about their life and how it's going to be ruined if they don't get these conversion problems and it snowballs. And I used to be the same way. I mean, when I was a student, I would think, oh my goodness, if I don't get an A in this class and I'm not going to be able to knock off this prerequisite, then I'm not going to be able to get this degree. And if I don't get this degree, then I'm going to live in a van by the river. You know, so it's, it's very easy when you're in school, and especially when there's a lot of pressure and everybody says chemistry is so hard and they hate chemistry and they hate math. It kind of becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy that you're not going to do well in chemistry because there's math and there are conversion problems. But I hope you find that that is not the case for you. I do have a lot of students who complete this course and say, I have put off chemistry for years and I'm so sorry I did because I really liked it. I don't want to take more chemistry classes. So, um, one of the ways I kind of ease students into unit conversion is to think of these dominoes. So I have a domino here with one dot, and I have a domino here with four dots. So, uh, if you think of these dominoes below as conversion factors, um, and these are kind of a pathway to how you can get to this four dot domino. So if you take this domino, and in order to get rid of this one dot, we have to cancel it with a dot on the bottom. So you have to have kind of like, in order to get rid of two, you have to divide it by two. Um, so then you'll get to two dots. If you use the next domino, you get rid of the two dots by having those on the bottom, you get to three dots. So if I stop the conversion process right here, I'm going to be in three dots, not four dots. So I'm going to go one more step, and I'll use three dots and four dots, and now I've carried out that conversion. Now in our chemistry class, when I ask you for conversions, or to carry out a conversion, you're going to be given conversion factors like 12 inches equals one foot. You can think of making this into a domino, 12 inches, one foot, like that. Or if you need it to be the other way around, you can write one foot over 12 inches. The idea with this domino analogy is that you can just flip them. And 12 and inch stay together and one and foot stay together. So it's just a physical flipping. Um, sometimes I have students say 12 feet is one inch, and that's not the same concept as flipping a tile domino. Um, so below, um, also on page 10, I have dominoes that have units on them. And this is a more typical example of what you're going to see in your chemistry course. Um, I ask, I say, I have so many kilometers, how many feet would that be? And this actually is pretty applicable to life. If you've ever traveled um, in Europe, they don't have miles, they have kilometers, you know, so you need to know, like, what is this? And it's not, it's not miles per hour, it's kilometers per hour. So, uh, you know, anybody tells you, you're not going to use this in life, you will use it in life. So don't be a hater. Chemistry is everywhere. Math is everywhere. It can be fun. You just need to take deep breaths and you can do it. Believe in yourself. Make it simple. Step back. Don't have a panic attack. Okay, so um, I've asked you a question. Let's say I'm asking you for how many kilometers, a certain amount of kilometers, how many feet is that? So I have these conversion factors here. And one way that you can kind of find your way with these conversion problems is to have a road map. So there is no one big conversion factor for kilometers to feet, but there is, there are 
kind of baby steps. So if you look kilometers to miles, so I can go kilometers to miles, miles to yards, and then yards to feet. Okay, so the way I'm going to accomplish this conversion is by canceling out. So just like we did above, kilometers will be on the bottom, miles on the top, um, then miles on the bottom, yards on the top. So if I stop right here, I'm in yards. And yards on the bottom, feet on top, and then get to that. So let's go to the next page and actually we'll talk a little bit more about cancellation and then on the following page we'll see some some of those horrible problems that you've heard rumors about. So unit conversion is a technique that is used to change any unit or units from one to another. There are three basic concepts that are used in unit conversion. We can multiply, divide, or divide any quantity by one, and the result will still be equal to the original quantity. So let's say I have 3.54 kilometers. If I divide that by one, it's still the original quantity. Uh, so we do this a lot with our starting quantities. The numeral one can be written many different ways when written in fraction form. Um, so you could have 12 over 12, that's equal to one. Um, you could have that's equal to one. So as long as the numerator of the fraction, that's the top, equals the denominator of the fraction, one equals negative one, two equals two, three equals three, the fraction is equal to one. Any definition involving units can be made into a unit definition. So a conversion factor equal to one. So like if I have 12 inches equals one foot, 12 inches over one foot, which is also equal to one foot over 12 inches is equal to one. Um, now I'll go through the specifics when we're carrying out these conversions on, on how to do that. Okay, so fraction multiplication. Cancel before multiplying. So if you have 12 divided by three, you can say one, four, so you can cancel. So basically what we're doing is if I have three kilometers um, divided by let's see one kilometer, one thousand meters, I can simplify before I get the answer. So I can cancel out my kilometers, so three thousand meters. So basically, any top or numerator can be canceled with any bottom when multiplying. Units act like numbers, but are separate from the numbers. Units can also cancel tops and bottoms. Now, something I will um, point out here, and we'll see more examples of this in the note packet. Miles per hour. So let's say you were going 85 miles per hour when you got that speeding ticket. And you want to figure out how many miles per second you were going for some odd reason. Um, so in order to get this hours to cancel, it's a little confusing. You think you might you have to have hours on the bottom, but you actually have to have hours on the top. So to get hours to seconds, I'm going to go hours to minutes, minutes to seconds. So I have um, hours to minutes, and then minutes to seconds. So I'm going to put in the, so in one hour there's 60 minutes, and one minute there are 60 seconds. So this conversion is kind of opposite of what we've been seeing and what we are going to see, but you can still see it from time to time. So you get hours to cancel out, minutes to cancel out, your units right now, miles per second. How you would enter this in your calculator, in your most awesome calculator, let's see if I can get the glare, not horrible. Um, okay, so 85, so 
Because 60 is on the bottom, I'm going to divide by 60 and divide by 60. So 85 divided by 60 divided by 60. So you are really only going 0 0.2, so it's 0 0.0236 miles per second when you got that speeding ticket. Don't forget sig figs, two sig figs here. Two sigs is really 0 0.024 miles per second. Sounds a lot better than 85 miles per hour. I don't know if the police officer would feel that way if you carried out that conversion in front of him. But, um, okay, so it's not that bad. Conversions can be fun. There are life applications, especially when you're talking speeding tickets. And then there's money, right? Not always, you know, conversions, things to figure out. Okay, so how many feet is three inches? This is a pretty straightforward one. I start you out on baby steps, build that confidence. So, um, so how many feet is three inches? Use the given conversion factor as your domino. So this is my conversion factor. I'm gonna write my starting quantity. This is my starting quantity, and this is my conversion factor. And again, don't think CF stands for cluster bleep. Um, it stands for conversion factor. Although a lot of times your conversion problems can feel like cluster. But hopefully, after this class, they won't. Okay, so you're going to write your starting quantity. I always like to write it over one, unless it's a two-unit starting quantity, like that 85 miles per hour. Okay, so this is my conversion factor. It can be written two ways. Think of it as a domino. One foot over 12 inches, or 12 inches over one foot. Um, so I'm going to say one foot, 12 inches. 3 divided, so it's going to be 1, 4, so that will be 0.25 feet. And I didn't write out my conversion roadmap because it was a pretty straightforward direct conversion, but it's going to be inches to feet like that. Check your sig figs. Sig figs. Um, so this has one sig fig. Your answer needs to have one sig fig. So I get point three feet. On the exam, we will give you tables of conversion factors. We expect you to know your metric prefix, your prefix multipliers like mega, kilo, deci, centi, milli, micro, nano. I do not expect you to know how many milliliters are in a quart. So a lot of times students who are anxious or concerned about their grade will say, do I have to memorize all these conversion factors? Because in another class I did. I always say, no, 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 you don't have to. We will provide that for you. Um, okay, so let's work example two. I measure the width of a table to be two feet. How many centimeters is that? All right, so you're given two feet. You're asked to find how many centimeters. So you start with your starting quantity, which is two feet over one. And then you're trying to put it together. So if you look in this table above, look for one uh, conversion factors that involve feet and then inches. So you can kind of piece it together like a puzzle. So if I start off in feet and I want to get to centimeters, I can go feet to inches, inches to centimeters. And you see how it kind of fits together. So I'm going to use these two highlighted conversion factors. Um, I'm going to use the feet to inches first. So one foot, 12 inches. And then I want inches to be on the bottom, centimeters on the top. 2.54 is married for life to centimeters. It's always going to stay together. No divorce is allowed in conversion factors. They've tried, trust me, but it doesn't work. Okay, and one inch here. Okay, so inches cancels out and you're in centimeters. Now, when you enter this into your calculator, 
you are going to enter anything that's on the top is multiplied. If anything was on the bottom, you would divide it. So you'll start with your starting quantity. 2 times 12 times 2.54. You get 60.96 centimeters. So my significant figures. I'm working on step 5 here. Just kind of freestyling, but I'm following these steps. 2 sig figs. So I get 61 centimeters. So hopefully that doesn't seem too bad. There is a process that you work through. And I find that students, it takes them a few tries to get these. Not like two or three, more like 10 to 15. And after about the 15th one, you get it. Kind of like you know how to ride a bike, but it took you a lot of tries to ride that bike and get that balance. Um, so students just want to get conversion factors and they're already intimidated by math so I find that a lot of students give up on this very quickly and they get frustrated. My advice is to seek help before it's too late, before you get to the frustration point. Come by my office hours, go by the SRC, ask your classmates for help, ask, class, ask for help in class. Um, it definitely does not bode well when students put off working on conversion factors until the night before the test. You're not going to get it the night before the test. So you practice these. Work your pink book problems. Um, work your pre-lab problems. Rewatch the lectures if needed. It's always a good, good thing to do. Okay, so... Okay, so more practice problems on page 13. So how many grams are in 0.2 pounds? So I give you a conversion factor here. And then there's a conversion factor here. Um, there are many ways to answer these conversion problems. You can come up with several different ways, several different roadmaps, and get the correct answer. Um, so your starting quantity is the 0 0.20 pounds. I'm going to put that over 1. And then you use this conversion factor here, which takes you from pounds directly to grams, that's going to be the quickest way. So you get one pound, 454 grams. 0.2 times 454, you get 90.08. And two sig figs, so that would be 91. All right, number two, try to find out how many feet per second you are traveling when you go 55 miles per hour. 55 miles per hour. So when you see the word per, that means divided. That's not like a cat purring. It's divided by, so 55 miles per one hour. So that's how you're gonna write it out. And I swear, if you write out your starting quantity like that with these um, starting quantities that have more than one unit, it will make your life so much easier. If you try to write it out like this, 55 miles slash hour, it's going to be confusing. Okay, so you're trying to get to feet per second. So you're going from miles per hour to feet per second. So one mile is 5,280 feet. I can go directly from miles to feet. Hours to second, I'm gonna go hours to minutes, minutes to seconds. So, I want you to hit pause and try to get those set up the correct way. Okay, so hopefully it looks like something like this. 55 miles times 5,280 divided by 60 divided by 60. You could have the 60 and the 5,280 in different order and it would still be correct. Like you could have it um, divided by 60 first, or the second divided by 60 first, or the second as well. Um, it's commutative. It doesn't matter which order you have it in. Um, okay, so when you enter this into your calculator, you've done all this beautiful work to get to this. Make sure you enter it properly into your calculator. So you're going to divide 55, or multiply 55 by 5,280, 
Then you're going to divide by 62 times. And you'll end up with 80.666 repeating. And that is feet per second. Two sig figs, so 81 feet per second. Okay, um, so if you can do that problem and you can get it set up properly, I think your conversion success is looking pretty strong. Um, it does take practice, and it's always a lot easier to work through these when I'm kind of guiding you through. So work alone on these. Try to set these up. Try to work your pink book problems. Wonderful resource there. Now, um, if you look at this fine print up here, these conversions will be given to you on um, an exam, but metric prefix conversions will not be given. So anytime you have um, conversions involving prefixes, you need to write out the prefix letter. And I encourage students to write this on their exam. So mega, kilo, base unit, deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, six, three, one, two, three, six, nine. Now, if I say one meter is how many centimeters, you're starting at your base unit, you're going to go two to the right, so it's going to be one meter is a hundred centimeters. And if this is hard for you right now, be sure that you go back and review using the prefix ladder. Okay, one meter is, let's start starting at the base unit, nine to the right, one billion nanometers. 1,000 grams is, we're going to go three to the left, one kilogram. One meter, so you're starting at your base unit, you're going to go three to the right, 1,000 millimeters. One megameter, mega to base unit, that's going to be six to the right, so one million meters. And then one meter is going to be six to the right micrometers or micrometers, so that would be one million. So the prefix ladder, as long as you remember it, can be a very useful resource because sometimes in conversion problems you need to use, like in the middle of it, you might need to convert meters to centimeters or grams to kilograms. Uh, so it can be useful to generate those conversions. So I want you to work these two problems and then I'll finish those up in the next lecture.